Hi, my name is Tanya Obu and today I'm gonna do a start to finish for you guys. So I'm really excited to see how that's gonna turn out. So let's start. I got into painting at a really young age. My grandma come from a family of artists, so this is like her that told me everything that I know about art when I was little. I have like really good memories with her where we were painting or doing like all sort of crafts. So that just has stick with me as I got older. And then I took a little break from that, but then it all came back, you know? So I felt the urge like to paint again and to create. I started doing that kind of, you know, self-taught and not really like creating random thing basically and, and not really thinking about it. Then I got into the mastery program in 2019. And then this is where I was able to like, you know, explore different medium and find my style, which, you know, led me to be an artist and a professional artist, actually. So for the first layer, what I want to do is really like wet the canvas and then let the paint decide almost what it wants to be. So, and it's just the first layer, so I'm not really overthinking it. It's really just to get a ground to work from later. At this stage, you can just let your creativity and use color that you love. I love to use like lots of water to create those drips. And then you can just take your brush and do that too. This is something I do all the time, just to create even more like splashes and texture. I am really like intuitive at first, and then I kind of develop a plan that I can work with. And then, you know, it all makes sense in the end, I would say. It's going to be interesting to see how it evolves. Okay, so now I'm gonna uh, do a layer of modeling paste on my painting just to bring more depth to it and to add a little bit more texture. So I'm gonna use a colorless tool. So this tool is like really flexible and then you can apply the modeling paste really good. And today I'm gonna use a uh, old track modeling paste. And what is interesting about modeling paste is that when you apply it with like in thin layer, these color will show true. So this is why I love using it. It creates depth, so that's fun. I feel like my collectors like kind of love the uplifting message that they are in my art. My goal is really to like bring some joy to them and to uplift them, to make them feel energized when they look at it. And I feel like that they love and that they want in their own, you know? Okay, so I just complete uh, the first layer of my painting. So to resume it, I did a layer of washes in acrylic, really having fun with the color. I have no plan already in my mind. So we'll, we'll leave it to dry for like, all the night and then tomorrow I'm gonna be able to do collage, spray paint and get my portrait in. I have kind of a process map out for like each piece I create. So it has became a recipe for me where I know the step that I have to do in order to have the result that I wanna get also. It's good to do that because it adds a cohesive look to your work and it makes it really yours. And like, this is when I think you develop your own style and that people start noticing, okay, this is Tanya's work. Like it's not anybody else. Okay guys, so we are starting our second day. So today I'm gonna do some spray paint collage. I'm gonna draw my portrait on top of all of it. And then we're gonna get this done. So let's go. Okay, this one is working. So let's go with the orange, because why not? A little bit of sun in a life. Spray paint is my favorite medium for sure because it allows you to just move and be really free with it. And it is also sometimes unexpected, like it makes really cool marks. So this is what I love about it. And then I love like all the mixed media stuff, things that you can just paint fast and you know, not let it dry for like hours, so yes. And I just like to add white on top after just to get those like sections that are receding a little bit more. 
So usually after spray paint, what I love to do is do a layer of collage. So to do my collage, usually I use this matte medium. So it's kind of fluid. And for me, I like it because it's gonna give the paper a matte finish. And so when I draw on top of it, it's gonna be easier for me. And also I'm really inspired by street art. So this is also something that I wanna incorporate more into my work. What speaks to me in street art is really the rawness like of the artwork. Like you go on the street and then you can just pass by like a beautiful like artwork that you probably could never see on canvas, like only, you know, on the wall. And I think the people also that does that type of art artwork are probably feeling really free when they do it. So I just love that. And I love also the graphic looks of it. And that's also something I would like to do one day, <laughs> having like my work on the street or things like that. So that's just like the whole culture of it really inspire me just by, I don't know, their boldness, like, yeah. So let's start. So to make sure your paper is sticking well to the canvas, you have to put a lot of glue. So don't like be cheap with the glue. <laughs> and then what I try to do is just have like random forms and you can go pretty like intuitive about it. Like I said, don't think too much. Just put it where it feels good to you. <laughs> And for me, the collage, it, it just has also texture, but also I love like adding graphic words and like stuff, imagery. A lot of my imagery, like personal symbols are like smiley and like words, things like that. So you can think about your personal symbols when it comes to collage and try to find paper that represent that. So for this particular piece, I had no plan at all. So my inspiration was just maybe color. I'm always inspired by color. So I just pick a few and went with it. Like kind of go with the flow, not really thinking about it kind of doing what I love at first and then just, you know, planning it as I go is really what I love to do. So my inspiration at first is always just like color, maybe pattern or a certain reference photo that I, that I wanna use. So for this one, like I had a few that I maybe wanted to use and then I ended up using this one, so yeah. These paper are fun because they will have like a neutral looks. So will balance all the bright. So if you use like a lot of bright color in your underpainting, you can always neutralize it with some paper or color. Okay, so I think this is a good place to stop the collage. I'm gonna add some gold leaf on top of that. Usually I just apply glue like that, a little bit like everywhere, and the gold leaf will stick where it wants to stick. So <laughs> it's not me that decide like where it's gonna be. Again, you can be more methodic about it, but I feel like it's really a process where you can be free and enjoy it. So we can move on to the next step, is actually doing more spray paint on top of it. I'm gonna start with the white, and I just like kind of do it over some paper, not everything, but just kind of pushing back some paper, adding a lot more like splashes and marks. You can even like, you know, go crazy with it. Cause I think that's just unify everything. Cause if you just leave like the spray paint in the background, then maybe it's gonna look a little bit more flat. I love to, you know, not think about it too much. Just let the painting become what it wants to become. And I love to embrace like every, you know, imperfection maybe we could call it. Things that are surprising to me and just go with the flow. Okay. I think I'm pretty much done for this step. So we're gonna wait for it to dry and then I will create my source, taking a picture of it and just overlaying my portrait on top of this messy layer. And then I'm gonna be able to draw it and then go home to paint it and finish it. How do you price your artwork? How do I price it? Um, I have a price list, so it's really simple. I price it for uh, by square inch, and usually I have a price list for like my work on canvas and my work on paper. So it's two different like price points that I work from. Okay, so now we can start drying her. And what I love to do while drying is really, you know, stay really expressive, not like getting caught up too much into the details. So you can try to draw also with straight line, which will help to make your portrait 
more realistic. So usually I don't spend a lot of time doing that because I know I'm gonna refine the portrait after too. So it's just about getting like the basic lines in and like some of the values. And also I choose a photo where, you know, she's looking at us and I knew that would match like the placement of her eyes. So that's why I choose this one. And also like you can see all the spray paint showing through. So I think that's gonna give really cool result in the end, like having those mark and the paper placed that way. Cause this is creating like a really good focal point where I'm probably gonna be adding like more details to that zone and the rest will be more like you know, abstracted and kind of feel my way through it. Sometimes I kind of lose like the beat and what has helped me is just to try to find like other idea or sometimes if I'm too focused on a section of the painting, this is where I lose my mojo. Like this is where I start overthinking it. So usually I just do something else on the painting. Just like having a, an extra step that makes me really happy in that makes me energize again. I would say in every painting, I feel like there's a moment where you kind of feel like, oh, is it gonna be good? I like, is it good enough? You just have to push through that and remember what was your vision for it and what you wanted to accomplish with that specific painting. The more like you do it, like the more you push through that resistance, I feel like this is when you, you start getting used to it and it's easier for you to just go through that stage and, and push through. Okay, so now we are at the step where we're gonna refine our drawing a little bit and then I'm gonna go to paint it. You can, at this point, still follow the source you made. You can have like the reference photo near you if that helps. For me, I'm just pretty much gonna leave it and try to be more expressive and not really follow the source. As I have my proportion laid down, now I know that it's okay and that I can just go on and finish it. So it's always good to stand back from your painting, to know like to see the proportion, see what needs to be done. Hellos you to, you can squinch your eyes and see the volumes better also. If you want something to stand out more then you can just adjust it. <laughs> I like how she turned out. I think she's really expressive. She's very bold. I wanted also to write like uh, cool quotes on it. So I wrote, I was born for this, which I, which I feel, you know, fits with the girls on it with, with all the bright color and stuff. So, and I don't know if I would have done something differently. I think at some point the painting kind of decides where it's wanna go and it's your job to embrace it and just deal with what happens. So yeah, I'm really happy about it. And for those of you who are like, oh my gosh, she's covering a lot of her collage, then I feel like it's just part of the process, part of the refinement. And at one point you have to kind of make choices to make your good painting. So you have to do it. What elements do collectors see in your artwork that attracts them? I feel like it's really the energy that attracts them. Like the colors probably, graphic, like with all the marks. It's really impactful also when you have like a portrait looking at you. So I feel like it does catch their attention. Even if they like it, like a collector could like it and another person could not like it, but I'm sure they would stop and look at it still just to be like, okay, yeah, this is really crazy. Sometimes this is a comment that I get, like your art is crazy, but I kind of like it. <laughs> okay, so I think I'm done with this one. I think I have like complete where it wanted to be and just adding like the smaller details on her face. So I'm pretty happy about it.